And now we want to turn to the pandemic. Nearly 97 percent, 97 percent of U.S. counties are either reporting high or substantial community transmission of COVID-19 now as this Delta variant just surges across the United States. And hospitals in the South are especially overwhelmed. ICUs in five states now reaching over 90 percent capacity. Take a look at what health care workers in the South have to say about that. We're seeing a lot of people getting really sick. Um, there are patients that'll come in and they'll be doing okay for a few days and then in the blink of an eye, they go downhill. Uh, right now, we have seen a pretty decent age range. I mean, as young as 30, I've even had one that was only in their 20s and as old as 94. Uh, the patients who are vaccinated are doing a lot better. Patients who are vaccinated most of the time don't even need oxygen. And they're just here because they have a few of the other complications and they're monitored and they do fine. Uh, most of the patients who end up going downhill, unfortunately, have not been vaccinated. It's tough for the ones who have been through it already to see. <laughs> um, to see these people struggle and die. The patients we took care of, I remember their names, I remember their families. I feel like this round, some of the staff, you know, have definitely compartmentalized and we don't let ourselves get as attached. Um, this time I, you know, last round I picked up as much as I could. I worked, I think there was a time I worked nine days in a row. I picked up, you know, at least five, six days a week. Um, this time I'm limiting myself to only one extra day a week to be there for my kids, my family, because of our hearts. We can't mentally do that again. It literally broke us. We try our best to stay a step ahead. If you're not thinking about the future and anticipating needs, you'll be without what you need to deliver care to your patients. The reality that one day we may have to deny care to someone in need, it weighs on you. You lose sleep at night over that. It's, it's, it's emotionally draining. We ask so much of them, healthcare workers there in the South, about this surge. And uh, as the calendar is about to turn to September, more students across the country are getting ready to head back to school. Mine already have. Day two, they're already making new friends and complaining about homework. But the debate over mask mandates in schools, they wear a mask all day, has, has grown to a whole new level around the country, with the Department of Education launching a civil rights investigation now into five states where Republican governors have made it against the law for school districts to require their students to wear masks. And I'd like to bring an infectious disease specialist at South Shore Health and ABC News medical contributor, Dr. Todd Ellerin, for more on this. Dr. Ellen, great to see you. Good to see you, Terry. So, le so let me ask you, what do you make of this civil rights investigation the Department of Education has launched, and how crucial do you think mask mandates are in schools like the public school here in Washington my kids go to? This is politics antagonizing an effective public health response. I mean, it's unbelievable to me. It really leaves me, my, you know, scratching my head that we have a virus that gives a thousand times more viral load, more burden of, of viral, you know, particles, and we're trying to keep our kids in school. We know that masks are, and vaccines are the two best ways we can do that, so I, I just don't get this. And Dr. Ellen, the Academy, American Academy of Pediatrics is now reporting nearly 204,000 new COVID cases in children in the last week and a 427% increase over the last month. So how concerned should parents be? Do you think we're looking at remote learning again? So, Diane, obviously this is the most contagious virus we've seen so far with, with COVID, the Delta strain. Um, but the good news still is that most kids really do well. It's not even clear that this is a more severe virus for an individual child than the previous strains. But remember, because it's so contagious, you have so many more kids infected. When you have so many more kids infected, you are going to see more severe cases, more hospitalizations, more intensive care unit visits. So it's, it's obviously we want to do the most we can to protect our children. The best things we can do are, you know, the, the safety measures that we know work best. Vaccinate those children who can be vaccinated and then 
the adults, we need to really cocoon our kids who are vulnerable, make sure we're vaccinated, and of course, we have to do the things that the American Academy of Pediatrics are telling us, are recommending, is to send our kids into school with masks on. It just makes sense. We want to keep our kids in school. I think that's our goal. It, it certainly is. So children under 12 uh, are not yet eligible for the vaccine, like three of mine. So when do you think that could change? You know, that's a good question, Terry. No one knows the exact answer for that, but I believe that the Pfizer vaccine will come first. I think for those that are maybe five, you know, to 11, I think that will occur. They'll, they'll probably get their application in, in, in October-ish, and hopefully, you know, within four to six weeks after that, we'll get an emergency use, you know, and that takes us into late fall, early winter. I'm really hopeful that we can get this vaccine into our children before, before next year. Um, and, and I really think that, remember, when we're talking about young kids, the FDA and the CDC have to really make sure that look at this under the, a lens of safety, right? Because again, we know kids do much better with COVID. I've been talking to pediatricians right now that frankly, they're more concerned about influenza and RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. We're, we're seeing a, 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 a real surge right now in the middle of summer. That's not something that we ever see before. It is totally unseasonal. And it probably has to do with the fact that, you know, we haven't had immunity in the prior winter. So, you know, I, I do think that it, it's important. So we're not just going to be dealing with, with COVID-19 this winter. That, that is a very good reminder. But until that vaccine for kids comes down, here's a question. Should parents, family members of those unvaccinated children, should we look to get booster shots sooner than the recommended eight months since our kids are, are unprotected? It's a really good question, and, and I get the fact that people are going to want to do that. I'm not saying it's wrong, but we really want to do our best to try to follow the guidance you know, from the FDA and from the CDC on boosters. And remember, and this is really important, whenever I talk about boosters, with the exception of immunocompromised people who really need the boosters now, what's much, much more important and what will change the arc of this epidemic in the U.S. and of the pandemic around the world is vaccinating the unvaccinated. We will get much more bang for our buck with that than with, you know, boosting otherwise healthy people. Now, it's been a week since the FDA fully approved the Pfizer vaccine. And according to ABC News analysis, initial data does indicate the U.S. has seen a slight uptick in average vaccinations. Now, a new Axios Ipsos poll also shows 20 percent of Americans now say they're not likely to get the vaccine. That's a record low. So what do you make of that? Do you think this approval could make a big difference? You know, Diane, it's only been a week. Uh, you know, I was hopeful that over this week we would see more, uh, you know, vaccinations uh, in the United States. Let, I think we need to give it a little bit more time. But, uh, you know, we heard before that a th almost a third of the people that were unvaccinated said if, if the vaccine got full approval, that they'd go and, and get it. I, uh, you know, I'm skeptical. I, I really hope that for people. I, we're still seeing it in my system. We're seeing people coming in every day who are really sick and they are the unvaccinated vaccinated ones. So, you know, it, it just, it, 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 I'm going to feel so guilty that we're all going to be getting boosters before much of the country has been, you know, has ever gotten their first vaccine. It's just going to accentuate the haves from the have-nots. We're just going to see more disproportionate hospitalizations, ICU admissions, and deaths from those who are unvaccinated. I'm, I'm really pleading with people to really understand that this is a very safe, effective vaccine. We're not going to be telling you one day in six months or a year that, oh my God, this is an unsafe vaccine that just doesn't happen. We have a lot of experience with vaccines. We know the trajectory. This is extremely safe, effective, and could save you or your child's life. Well, let's help that, I hope that word gets out. Dr. Todd Ellerin, as always, thanks very much. Take care, guys. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.